Okay, so we're here in the car now. Um, uh, I'm gonna go for a little drive in a minute. You know, you'll be able to pan the video around to be able to sort of see, you know, all the different different angles associated with the uh, different perspectives associated with um, uh, being inside the inside the driving simulator. And I'm gonna point out a few um, you know characteristics of the vehicle, but particularly you know the the sorts of um, human machine interfaces that we've explored in um, in studies. Um, uh, within the simulator. Okay, so again, I'm going to put the seatbelt on, and it's um, it's always interesting that, that the vast majority of participants in studies that we do in the driving simulator just automatically put their seatbelt on because that's a that's just a, a habit for for being in a vehicle. So um, relates very much to this sort of concept of presence as well within driving simulators. So, um, uh, or virtual reality more generally. Okay, so we're going to go for um, uh, for a little drive, um, uh, and um, yes, yeah, the same route as before. Um, and I'll point out a few um, characteristics. So obviously, being in a real vehicle, we have all the original controls: um, uh, the steering wheel, the pedals. Um, this vehicle's been set to be automatic at the moment, so I don't need to use a, a gear stick at all. Um, I can use the indicators. I can even use the lights or the horn if I wanted to. The, 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 the airflow comes through as well, so we can have air blowing at people. I could use the in-car entertainment systems. But we, um, you know, many of our studies will be about interfaces that may um, may have an issue associated with driver distraction. So we're interested in visual demand, um, uh, the, the manual demand, sort of hands off the hands off the steering wheel issues. We may well be interested in cognitive demand. How much are you mentally having to think about this interface as you're driving? So, for instance, interfaces like speech recognition and natural language interfaces. So we will. Um, you know, we'll be studying these issues. We have um, cameras all in the car. I may well, um, uh, quite commonly, I might be wearing eye tracking glasses. We can um, measure lots of different things associated with your driving performance. So that may be um, um, where I am in lane, how fast I'm driving, um, how close I get to other vehicles, to how close I get to pedestrians. All these variables will be measured uh, many times a second throughout the whole drive, and that becomes really um, important data for us to for us to analyze. So the combination of the, the, the driving simulator data, the, the camera data, maybe questionnaire data, maybe we have some physiological data with um, heart rate, skin conductance, um, um, uh, you know, yeah, things that might relate to a sort of an emotional response, for instance. Okay. Now, when it comes to the human machine interfaces that we might be investigating, they could be the sorts of interfaces that are, you know, are now commonplace, like touchscreens within cars, what well, the sort of distraction issues there and, and better ways of developing touchscreens. We might be interested in, in gesture-based interfaces, so where I might do certain gestures um, uh, with my um, uh, with my hand in order to, to to make things happen within the vehicle, so to, to provide a control. Um, we may be interested, as I mentioned before, about speech-based interfaces um, and and what the implications are for, for for workload, but also in terms of um, how people respond to a more natural um, a, a natural interface. So, um, do they? Uh, is there more empathy in the interaction? Are they? Um, uh, what sort of language do they use when they're responding? Does it have implications for driver driver trust? We may be interested in um, uh, in, in head-up displays within vehicles. So so up here is um, uh, is a is a head-up display, and um, uh, they're becoming increasingly common in vehicles. Um, but we may may be interested in the next technology um, uh, head-up displays that that start bringing in augmented reality, so we can overlay graphics onto the outside world and see what the implications might be. I don't know, say for, for a navigation system or for, for a collision warning system. And the last area which is becoming increasingly important in research in human machine interfaces um, in vehicles is, is automation, the move towards the, the driverless vehicle. And, um, and there the, the interfaces may be associated with resuming control 
how people might take control back in certain situations. It may be associated with um, with with vehicles with higher levels of, of automation, where we may be interested in what um, how people might um, interact with those vehicles in order to um, to be able to to, to 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 get in them, to be able to, to have a, a, a good sort of journey experience. Um, to, to be able to, to change the route, to be able to, to deal with all the controls in the, in the vehicle. Those are all really interesting issues as well. And the, um, particularly in the context of, of trust and, and what happens if there might be a problem in any given situation. So the, the driving simulator, as I've mentioned before, is a, is a safe environment, it's a controlled environment, it's a cost-effective environment. And so we can do studies very quickly and get really good data um, uh, when we, you know, when 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 humans um, are sort of immersed in these experiences and um, and hopefully have good presence and, and believe that they are um, within uh, a driving driving scenario. Okay, I'm going to pull over to the side here. I seem to be stuck in a traffic jam in the middle of nowhere, so I'll pull over to the side and. Um, yeah, I hope that was um, uh, that was interesting, and um, uh, and I'll see you all soon. Okay, take care. Bye bye.